Oh, thanks we give to you, Lord. Oh, thanks we give to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Benny. Oh, save it to you, Lord. We give to you, Lord. We give to you, Lord. Oh, thanks we give to you, Lord. We give to you, Lord. We give to you, Lord. Oh, thanks we give to you, Lord. We give to you, Lord. We give to you, Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jehovah Almighty. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jehovah Almighty. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Almighty. As we come into your presence, we thank for the word that you have deposited in our hearts, Lord. We thank for the words that are going to come forth holy spirit anoint those words let it be meat for somebody let it be food for somebody nourish our spirits lord make us strong let this word change us mold us transform us let this word prove us try us into the furnace of god into your furnace and that we may come out purified silver in jesus name we pray amen Praise the name of the Lord. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. It is the Word of God. It is nourishment for my soul. Salvation for my spirit. Healing for my body. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Thanks for coming again, joining us this Sunday on our service. Welcome to the beautiful Gate Prophetic Center where God is changing lives from ashes to beauty it is the beautiful gate where your life is made beautiful again god is rewriting the story of your life and writing a new chapter your story is going to be beautiful like the lame man that was sitting at the beautiful gate and he had an encounter we believe as you have come to the beautiful gate this morning you will have an encounter with the king of kings Jesus Christ of Nazareth is here to give you a new name, to give you a brand new story. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. We are reading today in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 19 tells us, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, reveries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control against such things there is no law that can bring a charge and those who are christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires if we live in the spirit let us also walk in step with the spirit let us not become considered provoking one another envying one another praise the name of the lord today we want to talk about the book of galatians was written <coughs> is a letter from Apostle Paul to the saints in Galatia and uh, he is speaking to Christians and we are speaking if you are tuning in on a Sunday morning I believe it's because you already have a um, head start you believe in God you believe in Jesus you identify to Christianity and God has a word for you but also if you do not know anything about Christ but you have just tuned in know that there is something in this message for you to start your journey and make your life beautiful again. Beautiful life starts with the, the relationship. God has brought us onto this earth for a purpose, and a purpose alone is to prepare us from the afterlife, 
heaven with him and beyond in the kingdom of God where we will live a life of beauty a life of bliss away from all the tears from all the sorrow from all the pain and in order to do that there is only one thing that I can sum up the Bible tells us one thing in this Bible it is that everything we are here to do everything that the Bible talks about can be summed up in one word relationships the way you relate with people today will determine where you will spend your eternity with Christ or away from Christ hallelujah we will be back in a moment so the first step in relationships is to work on your personality you need to work in your inner man work your person and the word of God addresses you as an individual and say you are a spirit you have a soul and you live in a body and you will need to work on you as an individual in order to have better relationship with others and this starts in chapter Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 where it says that the works of the flesh are evident and it says anybody who operates in the flesh who is producing works of the flesh in their lifestyles in their relationship with others will not be able to inherit the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of god so it is important to understand that the first step is you want to examine your life to the light of the scriptures are you displaying the works of the flesh in the way you relate with people number one is talking about adultery adultery definitely is an act of uh, betrayal it's an act of um, uh, of um, unfairness where you have you have wronged somebody you have wronged someone by taking away their wife their husband their spouse away from them we have uh, and that is called a work of the flesh because instead of taking what is yours you have taken what belongs to another it is not of covetousness that uh, which is one of the ten commandments secondly we talk about fornication fornication is having relationship with someone you're getting intimate with someone that you do not intend to have a lifelong relationship with you have not made a commitment to that person you have not allowed to receive the blessing of god you have not gone to the proper channel to make this relationship legal before God, acceptable before man. But you have you are illegal. You are a transgressor. And uh, that is uh, also a works of the flesh. It talks about uncleanness. Uncleanness can have uh, something to do with uh, uh, being lazy, not wanting to, uh, living in a very dirty environment and you're not willing to clean anything. If your level of dirtiness is where from January to December you never pick up anything, you do not wipe anything, you do not clean anything, you live in a state of total, of, of complete dirt in environment, completely dirty. If everything that you do, everything that you touch is dirty, is unclean, you smell, you stink, your parts smell, your car smell, everything about you is dirty. How can you expect one day to inherit the kingdom of God? God has given us this earth in order to take care of it, and he expects us to be good stewards. So we have a responsibility to keep everything clean around us. Because this dirt, we are not good stewards of what God has granted. And then other people around you are affected. Because your dirt, your uncleanness, your mess is also affecting the people who live with you in that environment. Uncleanness can also uh, has also to do with the way you speak. If you have a tendency of using curse word or speaking swear word of being a very uh, indecent in the words that you speak, there's uncleanness in there. The thoughts that you have, do you have nasty thoughts about people, impure thoughts, all that is uncleanness. There's a lot of uncleanness in the actions, the words, the thoughts. All that can show emptiness. We talk about lewdness. We talk about idolatry, which is worshipping 
or something as putting something ahead of God. If God is not first in your life, there is something else that is first that has taken that place. What is it to you that is more important that you'd be willing to die for, to leave everything for? That thing, if it is not God, is idolatry. You need to let it go. We talk about sorcery, the um, worship of um, uh, trying to communicate with the spiritually, going, getting acquainted to the spirit world, but through illegal means. It's not the things of God. Sorcery normally has to do with cursing other people, uh, enchanting other people, using the spiritual powers to, defend, to, to, to hurt other people. And that is obviously something that is the works of the flesh. We're talking about hatred. Hatred has to do with murder. When you hate people, you could kill that person. When they die, you're happy. When they get sick, you're happy. That is definitely the works of the flesh. We're talking about uh, contentions. Contention is strife. Never willing to back down, to compromise, to agree with people. Always in a state of tension. You want to keep people uh, on their toes. They've done something to you. We don't let go. That is contentions. You remind them over and over the things they've done. That is contentions. We're talking about dissensions. So where you divide, you bring, there is divisions, there is sections, people just uh, separate over and over again. We we'll talk about um, jealousies. Jealousies, when you envy someone, you could do something in their back. When you have an opportunity, in the weak moment, you will use that against them. We're talking about um, adverse of wrath. Um, adverse of wrath is... Everything is calm and quiet, all of a sudden, a thunder in a blue sky. There is pain because opposite of right, you can start blurting anything, you, you hurt people, you, you, and you can't take it back afterwards. We're talking about selfish ambitions. Your ambitions is about yourself. You don't consider how it will affect other people. You want something at all costs. doesn't matter who gets hurt in the proper process. It's about relationships again. We talk about descent, we talk about uh, heresies, heresies, fallacies, believing a deceptive, a, a, a lie. In the things of God, in the word of God, you're believing a lie. You are not following what the word of God says. You rather follow a voice that of false prophets by telling wrong things. They are leading you in the wrong direction, away from God. And if you are ears that are itchy, you will follow the wrong voice because your heart's not right. You are attaching yourself to what is wrong. And that is also a work of the flesh. It tells us to envy, envying other people. Jealousy and envy is a similarity, although with jealousy, uh, you want, you don't want them to have the good. You're not happy when somebody prospers. But with envy, you want that thing for yourself. You just want that for you. Excuse me. Also, it talks about murder. Killing somebody, stabbing somebody, obviously, has to do with it's hurting relationships. It's harmful to relationships. We can see that. Drunkenness, when you get drunk... It affects your family, it affects your children. You're not home, home, at, at home on time. You waste the money. You're irresponsible. And you can act in many different ways, do different things. You can even sit with somebody and not remember who you sat with the night before. So it is very uh, irresponsible behavior. We have reveries or going to orgies, to those white parties, and being part of that life that does not glorify God. Hey, people go there to indulge the flesh and do whatever they feel pleased to do. They can date somebody that night. That's where you have a lot of night, one night stands that happen in reveries. And the lack of which God says, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. The fruit of the Spirit, that is why we want to pray that the Lord will give us now, may release us from the works of the flesh. May the Lord deliver us from the works of the flesh. May the Lord take away the works of the flesh in the name of Jesus. We pray that from today, you'll be set free from the works of the flesh. You will not operate in the works of the flesh. You will operate in the spirit 
you let go of fleshly behavior, of evil behavior, of satanic behavior. All these things we have spoken about, let it be, may you be free from it today in Jesus' mighty name. I hope you were blessed. I want you to know that if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to speak right now. Allow him to write your name in the book of life. You do not know the Lord Jesus. You are not sure if you die today, will go to heaven. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. And I recognize today, I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. Come, save me, heal me, wash away my sins in your precious blood. Write my name in the book of life and give me your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. If you've done this prayer, please contact us at morphim.org. Write us a message. Call our number 6822401362. We'll be willing to pray with you to send you a little packet and prepare you into your new walk with Christ. We also want you to let you know that we have our services every Sunday from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. Join us online. Join us soon. We'll send you an address where you can come and join us physically. We want you to know that God loves you. God cares for you. For every child of God, if this is the place where you are receiving your uh, weekly meal, uh, Sunday service sermon, where you are being fed, you can send your tithes and offerings. The tithes is the 10% that you send to your church to stay connected, to connect to the blessing and to the partnership of this uh, church. God is a willing this ministry. God will bless you. God will prosper you. And through your tithe, God promises that he will take the devour, rebuke the devourer from your work. You will bless in your workplace. Nobody will dethrone you. Nobody will throw you out of that job. But we believe that as you connect, we shall be blessed. We have our meetings every Thursday, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. to pray for the nations, to pray for your needs. Connect to us on the conference call. On Saturday, we have evangelism. We have choir practice. If you can sing, if you have a gift in worship and drama, come and join us. If you're an artist, come and join us. We are preparing for our next great conference, September 28th. We need you. We need you. Connect with us. This is Dulos, the voice that cries. Pastor Jen, God bless you. Beautiful Gate Prophetic Center. We love you. Bye-bye.